What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Diesel Creek. My name is Matt. It's that time of year again. Spring is in the air, and that means one thing. Richie Brothers auction season. Let's head out to the auction and see what we can find. Everybody needs a Hummer in their life. Troop carrier set up. Seats wet. Roof leaks. I don't know. They, they got a key in here. This isn't factory. But it should start like this. I'm not getting any any sign of life, so I think the battery's dead. That's a bummer. Would have really liked to heard this thing run today. Are you guys excited? I mean, I know you didn't buy it, but but I, are you excited? I'll be real honest, I didn't even look at this thing too well because I didn't think I was gonna buy it. I thought that this was gonna go for closer to $20,000. And the only reason I bought it is because it was cheap. And I've never seen one sell for less than $20,000. The battery was dead when I looked at it prior to the auction. So I got the cables on it right now. It's a 24 volt system, so I can only charge one battery at a time. But we got some things happening now, so I'm gonna let that charge a bit. See if we can't get this thing fired up. The guys here at the auction said it ran and they drove it around, so fingers crossed. I'm I'm pretty excited about it. Well, I have no idea if it's gonna go, but we can try. We need more power. Oh. Oh, yeah. We got oil pressure. Battery voltage is going bananas. That's interesting. We'll let it warm up a bit and see what happens. All right, well, here's my first time driving a Hummer. Is that low, high, neutral? Put that guy there, put that guy in drive. Oh yeah, it's ready to gallop. Oh. Boys, we bought a freaking Hummer. thought that this was one of my life goals but at the same time I kind of feel like I just did one of my life goals oh ho, ho, ho. like a kitten Got the Hummer home here, drove home fine. Um, definitely has a few little stupid issues on it. Nothing major that I've noticed. As you may be able to tell, this top has seen better days. Let's see if we can't scare up a replacement for it. All right, well, I'm pretty excited about this. Inside of this box should be a new used top for the Humvee here. I gotta give a big shout out to Clint over at CNC Equipment. He's a buyer and seller of uh, military vehicles and heavy equipment and he gets his fingers into a little bit of everything from what it seems, but he's got a really cool YouTube channel. If you guys uh, like my channel, you probably like his too. So if you wanna go check that out, tell him thanks for hooking me up. 
see if we can't open this box as well without slicing into the top. Oh yeah, look at that. That's what I'm talking about. No holes in this one. That's a heck of a lot better than what we got. Did we get presents? Did we get presents? the new back window as well that thing looks great let's get this thing installed and again big thanks to Clint you guys go tell him I said thanks the meatball thanks him too well like I said I've never done this before but it looks pretty straightforward it's just a whole bunch of these little quarter turn clips everywhere and uh, looks like we should be able to just unwrap this thing like a present. Alright, I was trying to remove this thing in one piece, but it's like uh, this stuff has shrunk and hardened from the sun. So it's junk anyway. Just make life easier and cut it off. I'm sure there are some Humvee experts out there just dying inside a little bit at the way I'm doing this, but seems like the easiest way to go about it. Yeah, let's see. I'm barely touching this window and it's just peeling right out of here. I especially love the realism in this video because every video on YouTube, anybody taking a top off a Humvee, seems like they're always in like Arizona or beautiful sunny California. And the weather's just choice. Here, it's like 52 degrees and overcast and slightly rainy. Alright, so the part I'm really struggling with here is that there's one of these like quarter turn lock deals right down like between this column and the stake bed side here. Makes it awful hard to get off. Uh huh. Come on. Come on. This is way harder than it should be. There we go. is completely off. Sweet. I think this is going to be the hardest part putting the new top on. Ta-da! Completely scalped. All right, so these Humvees are completely convertible from two four from the two-man setup like we have here to a four-man setup which is what you see more of um, and then the roof would slope down like right there and you have the little pickup truck bed so these floor plates cover off where the second seats would go and I've never opened them because you know that top and everything was in the way 
and I just popped the two screws out of it and I slid this thing forward a little bit and I can see there's stuff under here so I figured I'll start the camera and see what we find. I have no idea what's in here. Huh. Well look at that. This might be all the pieces to make it a four man. I had no idea any of this was in here. This may have been a four man and they put a two man top on it. Why would they have done that? Do we want a four man or do we want a two man? Look at this, yeah. Ugh. A lot of wasted room down here. They're not in very good shape, but those are seat cushions. Look at that. Now you guys that know these things, drop that down in the comments. Let me know if that's standard. If all these two-man units automatically came with that, or if this is something unique here. And I got lucky and got extra pieces that I shouldn't have. Well, I'm feeling kind of smart and stupid at the same time because I don't know that much about these Humvees. Like I've said a hundred times, I just bought this one because it was cheap. So I think you can take off that cover right there, which would allow you access in and out of this back seat area. And it looks to me like this thing would slide right down in a groove right there and uh, be the backrest for the passenger seat. Another backrest here. Ooh, what is this? <laughs> what is that thing? I feel like this is turning into one of those gimmicky YouTube videos where there's like this mystery hidden thing, but 100% serious. I don't know what this thing is. It's very low. What in the world are these things for? Somebody's got to let me know in the comments what the heck these things are. Yeah. Look at that. There's a number on there. Not sure if that means anything to any of y'all. Could be 100% coincidence, but uh, these things seem to line up back here. The bolt holes all line up. I believe these are antenna mounts, but I think it's just a standard four on four bolt hole configuration, and that doesn't mean anything. So, yeah, comments. What the heck are these things for? Also, in the process of undoing everything, we uncovered another issue here. See that? That's supposed to be, you know, mounted in that hole, but uh, it's not. All right, well, so the whole vehicle is built with these threaded inserts that are kind of like rivets, and they have threads in there. I know the camera's probably not focusing on them, and I'm pretty sure that's what was in here and fell out. Um, so I just made my own threaded insert out of a grease fitting here, and I tapped this out for the grease fitting, which was pretty close to that size already. So I'm going to put some Loctite on that thing and uh, we'll stick that in there. It's just gotta last until the threaded insert tool I just ordered off Amazon shows up. It's only temporary, unless it works. <laughs> All right, maybe not good as new, but good enough for what we're doing.
Well, there she is, guys. There it is. Man, does that thing look better. So again, a big thank you to Clint at CNC Equipment for sending this thing over. Getting me all high and dry. So make no mistake about it, even with a nice new holeless top on here, I'm betting this is still no picnic to drive down the road in a rainstorm. Can you see that gap right there? I don't think we did anything wrong. I think maybe you could adjust the door a little bit to close that up a bit, but it's still like, these are just not vehicles that are made to be completely wind and water type. I mean, look at that guy right there. That's a hole straight in to right behind the driver. So there's not much getting rid of a lot of this stuff. I'm sure you could probably play around and make it better, but without buying one of these aftermarket top kits that's all stamped aluminum and everything, which are very expensive, you're just not going to get that kind of seal. this thing for several months now and really haven't driven it a ton I have driven it some but uh, it's time to do some preventative maintenance on it so when I picked this baby up at the auction I did check all the fluids and everything all the fluids looked good uh, the oil was dirty but not not too terrible I haven't driven it enough to to cause any damage I wouldn't think the oil was clean there's no coolant or anything in it like that and it's full up to the correct level but it is dirty it's definitely time for an oil change uh, I got a fuel filter coming for this thing and uh, we're gonna check out the coolant again. I don't think there's any other filters other than that. So I was able to get the regular old oil filter from Napa, but the fuel filter is actually in this canister right here. And I actually had to Google that myself because I couldn't even, I didn't even see that thing. The engine in this Humvee here, and uh, I can't remember exactly what year they switched up to the bigger engines, but this is the 6.2 liter GM diesel. I think it's actually a Detroit diesel. Um, and these were, you know, early small diesel engines. They were not particularly powerful. It's, in fact, it's completely gutless, but it will run forever from what I'm told and what I researched. Um, but they don't make a whole lot of power. so. I want to make sure that we're getting every little pony out of it that we can. I'm going to check the air filter here, which uh, I think I did when I bought it, but I really don't remember now. Yeah, we just got to get a 9 16th, pull that guy off of there, and uh, hopefully it's nice and clean. I say that, but actually, I would actually feel better if it was dirty and I could just clean it and get a little more air to this thing and maybe make a little more power out of it. And same thing goes for that fuel filter. When the new one comes in and we open that fuel filter housing up, I'm almost in a weird way, hoping that it's dirty so that I can say, oh, well, we're gonna have a little more power here after we put a fuel filter in it. But I don't know that that's gonna be the case. I think it's just a big boat anchor under the hood here. They do make turbo kits for these engines. Well, I really, let me rephrase that. They used to make turbo kits for these engines. I think you'd have to do pretty much a custom thing now or find a used one because the Banks Sidewinder turbo kits have been discontinued, and I think any other, any other manufacturers that used to make one have also since ceased production on that. Let's pull this air filter. Ah, well, I guess it's actually a good thing. The air filter is nice and clean. Um, little teeny bit down here at the bottom where it was rotated, but... I can't complain about that at all. It looks like it's been, probably hasn't been driven much. It's still nice and white. No visible heavy dirt or anything. So we'll put that back in. No sense changing that. It's still quite good. Let's fire this thing up and check the transmission fluid. burnt it all, so I think we're just going to pop it off. 
Now I haven't had any cooling issues with this thing. It seems to run nice and cool, but down here between the radiator and the uh, transmission cooler, there's quite a bit of debris underneath there. So I'm gonna take the air compressor and try to blow that out of there. Kind of a pain on this setup. I wish there was some way that this could easily be like unpinned and flipped up out of the way and cleaned that better. Uh, but it doesn't appear that that would be very easy to do here. Well, I think it might just be a hair low because there's the cold level line there about halfway down the tank and uh, it's hot right now and it's about at that level. So it might be just a little bit low, but that coolant looks really nice. It's good and green. Doesn't look, uh, doesn't look like it's contaminated at all. So I'm gonna let that go. Magnetic drain plug doesn't really have anything on it at all. Teeny little bit of oil sludge, but no metal flake or anything. Looks good. Got the drain plug back in there. While the oil was draining, I was down here rolling around inspecting everything and I don't know if you guys can see it. Lighting's not the best, but the brake pads look good. They're probably a little more than half. So for as much as I'm gonna drive this thing, those will last me a long, long time. There are grease fittings on every pivot point down here except for the A-arm bushings, so I'm glad to see that. We'll have to get the grease gun down here and grease up everything. Well, that oil filter's a little too tight. There we go. So for an oil filter, we got us a Wix 51061. That looks like, looks like the last time it was changed was in April of 2010 or 18. I can't make out exactly. All right, so you guys have seen me use this stuff plenty in the past here, the Rotella T5. I really like this stuff. It's a synthetic blend, so it's got the best of both worlds, the conventional and the synthetic. And you're supposed to be able to get longer oil change intervals out of this stuff. It's got uh, different additive packages and stuff in it compared to the regular T4, and uh, I just believe it's a better, better bang for the buck. And since this is a low mileage engine, we want to treat this thing right. And, and yeah, we'll keep this thing on the road for uh, quite, quite a while longer. I can't fill the oil filter all the way up because it installs from the side, but I can fill it up about halfway. That, of course, helps keep from having a dry start up. We'll go with that there and get the filter installed and fill up the engine. I'm not even sure how much this thing takes, but I got a little over five gallons here. I like these two and a half gallon jugs too. It's, it's enough that you don't feel like you're going through 20,000 containers and being wasteful and it's not so cumbersome like a five gallon jug where you have to uh, get a crane to hold the thing upside down for you while you're pouring it in. Get this filter installed. I've said it before too, these jumbo metal funnels that I have, if you don't, if you don't have one of these things you're missing out. It really makes pouring all the good stuff in that much easier. Oh man, no, 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 no. Here I am bragging about my funnel and making a mess with my funnel at the same time. The filler neck on this engine is a little goofy. Ah, making a mess again. The way the oil filled tube is on this engine, it has these two ears for the cap to lock into. And if you fill the funnel up and it's trying to suck air, it uh, blows the oil out those two notches for the ears. 
and runs all down over the engine. So, gotta go, gotta pour slow. All right, we are just over the full mark and that should be perfect because we gotta start it up and finish pumping the oil into the oil filter. So, let's do that and check it again. Gotta let the glow plugs run on this thing. It is, I mean, the engine's warm still, but not hot. And uh, it does not like to start without the glow plugs. The batteries are also getting a little bit weak in this thing, so I'm gonna end up having to put a set of batteries in it. So if the batteries were better and spun the engine over faster, it might start easier without the glow plugs, but. When you let the glow plugs go, it fires right up. There we go. Just a little past the full mark, and uh, that's fine though, because we're actually leaning back a little bit, so that stands to reason we'd have a little more than we should back there around the dipstick. Hmm. Not a big fan of that oil cap. Kind of feels like it could come off of there. Well, we're still waiting for the fuel filter to show up, so we might as well get after the whole thing with uh, the old grease gun here. Well, I'm not really going to make you guys sit and watch me uh, pump every grease fitting because uh, there's a lot of them. Well, the fuel filter we were waiting on finally arrived, so let's go ahead and work on getting this canister off of here. Looks like we need to unplug this wiring harness, two hoses, and a drain hose down the bottom, and then just loosen that bolt, and I think this whole assembly will come right out. All right, I think when I pull this bottom hose off of here, any water and fuel that's in the filter is going to drain out. I got a pan down here, but we'll have to pay attention here and see if there was any water. There we go. That looks like good green diesel. I don't see any water. Got to be honest, I, I'm not a fan of this filter setup. I don't understand what is wrong with a regular old twist-on canister. What do I know? What a pain. You can't go straight up with it on account of you don't have enough headspace. Uh, how stupid. There we go. Good lord. Man, that's a pain. Fine mesh screen that goes down inside the filter. It looks really good. There we go. Actually, this fuel filter, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to tell on camera, but it, uh, it doesn't look too good. It's got a bunch of this little sediment looking crap down here at the bottom of it. You can kind of see it where it's draining the fuel down here on the tailgate. It's, it's got some stuff in it. It does not look super clean, but it's not super dirty either. So, so here's the new filter, which appears to be made considerably better. New filter, new screen, ready to reinstall this thing.
this thing back in there. Right, so our fuel filter is completely empty now. I have the bleeder screw on top of it opened up. So there, I don't think there's an electric fuel pump on this thing. I think it's all mechanical. So we're going to have to crank the engine over until fuel squirts out of there. And hope the engine doesn't start because that could potentially put a bubble in the system and starve it for fuel. Not only is this filter a pain to install, it is a terrible pain to bleed as well. It's just got every strike going for it. I think we finally got it bled down. I'm trying to tighten it up now. All right, let's see if we can get this thing to fire. We definitely got a bubble in the fuel system now. With the ether got that bubble out of the system real easy and we were able to get this thing fired up it's running good now it's time to take this thing for a rip and see if we notice any performance improvements Big hill to climb here. Hopefully, we can do her. muffler broke off and it's gonna hang down and catch on stuff so we're unbolting it because muffler deletes are better anyways 
Yeah. Yep. Little field, little field repair there. Performance upgrade in the field. Pretty good little mud hole. The old Humvee ripped right through that. I'm I'm right impressed with that. Even my buddy with the Jeep there said he didn't think I was getting out of that. Well, I fell into the deep part again here. thing sounds ignorant without a muffler. Woohoo! <laughs> Man, this thing is incredible. might have to come to the rescue here. him out.
is one of those cameras don't do it justice kind of moments. This hill isn't super steep or anything, but it looks flat on camera, and believe me, it's a hill, and it's running out pretty bad, but on camera, it looks like a highway. Man, I think I love this thing. This is by far the most off-road capable vehicle I've ever owned. This thing's a beast. be honest here. I love driving it. It is so choice. If you have the means, I highly recommend picking one up. <laughs>